this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Welcome to another End Times for the Believers Prophecy Update. I think the caption of our opening program says it all. Peerless times shall come, and we need to know it so that they don't catch us off guard. In a moment, I am going to be sharing a message that is prophetic in its scope, one that brings us to this very current day and just a little past it. The prophecy of the empty earth or the upside down earth mystery. And then after sharing that prophecy, I am going to close with a critical word of encouragement so that please, I earnestly implore you to spend the time to listen to what I believe is the word of the Lord for the church in this hour. God is not abandoning his people. The Lord is speaking to his beloved with words that are in season relevant to the things that we're going. But he does not want us to be ignorant of what is happening before our eyes. Father, please help me as the ministry here is growing extensively, and there are those who are hungry to hear your word. And Lord, my desire is that you would simply use me as a vessel to speak to the hearts of the people that you love so dearly. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Before I share the prophecy that deals with the empty earth or the upside down earth phenomena. I want to set some things in context here to establish a couple principles. And I am reading from Ecclesiastes chapter three, beginning in verse one. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Soon turned into mayhem. Oh, See how fast the cops turn around once the f saw the numbers game. A tense standoff that soon erupted into combat between Capitol Police and a pro-Trump mob that outnumbered officials. They're getting into the Capitol tonight. Those threats to storm the Capitol building quickly played out in violent clashes. Oh, As officers tried to keep rioters from moving further onto the ground. It's over! You better run, cops! You better run! What instead happened was a scene unlike any other, one of the most jarring in the country's history. <laughs> breached security, broke police lines, and led a rampage through the Capitol Rotunda, vandalizing the historic building, ransacking offices of lawmakers, and even more alarming, challenging armed law enforcement officers who tried to restore order. <laughs> 
the situation escalated to a point where one rioter was shot to death while trying to lunge through this barricaded door, where armed police were on the other side protecting congressional leaders who were hiding. Other rioters were able to enter both Senate and House chambers as lawmakers rushed to safety. This occupation inside the U.S. Capitol went on for several hours before law enforcement officials with more resources called in were finally able to secure the area and move away the crowds. President-elect Biden said the nation is still shaken by this deplorable display, adding... What we witnessed yesterday was not dissent, it was not disorder, it was not protest, it was chaos. And so the chapter begins with this very statement of principle. To everything there is a season and a time appointed, if you will, to every purpose under the heaven. And we might add to that, there is a time for nations to build, to begin, to establish. And there is a time when those nations come to an end. In our history as a nation, things were quite different when this nation began several hundred years ago. The sentiment of the people, of the founding fathers, are so much different, were so much different then than they are today. It was a difference of night and day. It was a time when men were regarded as being equal. It was a time when our nation believed in freedom to speak your mind, your heart, without being censored, our First Amendment. But I am going back in time to a period where a great man who you will recognize his name, Benjamin Franklin. He delivered his famous speech asking that the convention begin each session with prayers. He was 81 years old at the time and he made the following assertion. This he did, by the way, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is probable that an empire can rise without his aid. We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings that except the Lord build, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this building no better than the builders of Babel. That is profound. He asserted his conviction that God was intimately involved in the inception of our nation, that God governs in the affairs of men, and that the Lord is focused on the most minor detail of human existence, even to the point of the a perceived worthlessness of sparrows. It was a time when men believed in God and were not ashamed to declare their belief. But now things are different. We are living in a different time. The layout of our present human experience 
is far different than it was back in the days of our founding fathers. And so I bring you now to the prophecy that I believe is referenced to this generation and just following briefly. Reading from Isaiah chapter 24, beginning in the first verse, this is what we read. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Verse 2 gives us the scope of God's dealing upon the earth in the final days. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Verse three, the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled for the Lord hath spoken this word. Verse four, the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. And so we ask the question, why is it that we would see at such a time as this a wrath as before it was a time of building. Now it would appear it is a time to tear down that which was built. And so the question is asked, why God? Why this wrath? Verse five tells us, in Isaiah 24, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. They have changed the ordinance. They have broken the everlasting covenant. In verse 10, we read, the city of confusion is broken down and every house is shut up that no man may come in. Verse 13, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree. This prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. We are seeing the foreshadowing of this coming event upon the earth when God is shaking the very foundation of humanity's social existence. Verse 10, the house is shut up that no man may come in. We have already seen this phenomenon. Never before could we have imagined that in the United States of America, we would be shut in our houses. It has happened in 2020, and you can expect that it is going to happen in an even greater degree in 2021. And you can further expect that the constitution that was established by our forefathers is gonna to continue to diminish in its application. 
Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? Thank you. Let the record show the witness. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Yes, Mr. Johnson. I think we left out the phrase, so help me God. We did. Could we have the witnesses do it again for the record? No. Yeah, if they want to do it, but some of them don't want to do it. And I don't think it's necessary, and I don't like to exert my will over other people. Well, it goes back to our founding history. It's been part of our tradition for more than two centuries, and I don't know that we should abandon it now. One of those elements, the freedom of speech. Yes, we are experiencing worldwide the wrath of God. It is coming upon this world. And God gives us a reason or the reasons why. Because we have transgressed the laws. We have changed the ordinance. We have broken the everlasting covenant. In terms of this wrath, things turning upside down, we have grown accustomed to being able to freely speak, knowing that not all would agree with our opinion of things, and I am speaking in general terms, but that we have the liberty to communicate as human beings in this nation. But that is being turned upside down. There is a cancel culture that is underway, that is happening in such rapid scale that it's mind boggling. Just the other day, the President of the United States of America was banned from social media. Donald Trump isn't the only victim, though, of the big tech boycott. Twitter's gone further and removed the accounts of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, ex-Trump lawyer Sidney Powell, and other high-profile supporters of the president. Flynn and Powell both met with Trump at the White House in recent weeks as part of efforts to overturn the presidential election results. YouTube's joined the trend and banned Trump's former chief strategist, Steve Bannon. Mexican President Andres Obrador has expressed concern over the power of social networks to silence and censor who they want. What was done a few days ago in the United States is a bad sign. Private companies decide whom to silence and censor. This does not bode well and is contrary to freedom. We discussed the issue with Julio Rivera, editorial director of ReactionaryTimes.com, and Federica Bindi, who's a professor of political science. There is a thin line. I mean, the freedom of speech is guaranteed, but uh, subulation, invitation to violence, that is a completely different thing. What they're doing is that they're going ahead and expressing a message to the American people and to a lot of these other Silicon Valley giants that it's okay to go ahead and censor speech that you do not agree with. And that is contrary to the spirit of the First Amendment in America and contrary to the spirit of free speech. This is upside down. One of the founders of the Walk Away campaign, having 500,000 members, those who believed that the conservative viewpoint was more essential to a well-being of humanity, that they started a movement. That site has been taken down, gone. 500,000 members no longer able to communicate with each other. Leftist forces in all of America are attempting to silence you, me, all of us. Well, my next guest knows this all too well. Joining me now is Brandon Strzok, founder of the Walk Away Campaign, a grassroots movement dedicated to helping liberals walk away from the Democrat Party. Brandon, after your group was given the boot <laughs> completely from Facebook, this is the email that you say they sent you. Pages that are hateful, threatening, or obscene are not allowed. Continued misuse of Facebook's features could result in the permanent loss of your account. So what was hateful and threatening um, on your page, Brandon? 
I, I guess they found us to be threatening to the success of the Democrat Party. Uh, I mean, basically, my page, the only content that goes on the walkaway campaign page are testimonials, true stories, videos, and written testimonials coming from people all across America and across the world who have had enough of exactly the type of behavior that we've been uh, seeing from social media in the last couple of days, not to mention uh, from the liberal media, not to mention from the extremist behaviors of the Democrat Party, pushing more fringe, more left, more socialism, more globalism. Uh, more extremity. I mean, that this is what they're walking away from. But this is the only content that goes on my page are these testimonials. These are people telling their stories. So there would never be any opportunity for anyone to uh, glorify breaking into the Capitol building or glorify an act of violence because people are just talking about why they want to leave the left. So it was uh, it was pretty scary today when we woke up and we found that our group had been shut down. Every one of my employees, I have about a dozen paid yeah. employees, they've all, they've all been banned. My volunteers have been banned. So and Brandon, I, I, hold I on, hold worth... on. Brandon, where are you gonna go? Because now Apple is threatening to remove Parler from the Apple right. app store, meaning you're not getting Parler either, at least on Apple, Google Play, it looks like the same thing. So where are you gonna right. go? Well, we're, we're, so we're, re, we're rebuilding right now on clouthub.com, which is a conservative-owned social media platform similar to Facebook. I want to encourage everybody in your audience right now to go immediately to clouthub.com and sign up. And, can you, uh, can you spell that, one. please, uh, Brandon? Spell sure. it. That's clout, C-L-O-U-T. Hub, H U B, clouthub.com. And they have an app which you can uh, load in the app store as well. Uh, but the Walkway Campaign group is now, we're starting, we're, we're rebuilding from scratch. Uh, so the, please join our group, uh, help us out okay. there. But this is really. It's really damaging, Laura. I mean, because the people who lost their, who got my my employees who got banned, some of them are merch managers. Some of them are videographers. They have other businesses besides working they don't with me. Care. Now they can't do their business. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon, the left doesn't care. They want right. total control, no questions asked, sit down, shut up, get locked in, and no, you know, that's it for you. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't want a debate. They don't want a conversation. They want you silence, period. It's a lot like the CCP, if you ask me. But the CCP's their their outlets still get somehow heard in the United States uh, media platforms. Uh, Brand Brandon, thank you right. so much. Soon, it may very well be that we will, as Christians, be unable to communicate with one another. And should the Lord tarry, the church may find itself necessarily so to go underground. The days when our fathers held to the position that the sovereignty of a benevolent God was essential for the well-being and happiness of his creation, those days are gone. The world is being turned upside down and again, you say, why? Jesus gave us a clue. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. We read in Romans, beginning in the 18th verse of chapter 18, how it was in the days of Noah. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because when they knew God, neither were they thankful, neither did they glorify him as God, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Verse 4, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts 
to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Verse 26, for this cause, once again, the why of the wrath and the judgment, God gave them up for this cause unto vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 24 said, Wherefore God also gave them up. I have that underlined and highlighted in that verse. God also gave them up. In verse 26, God gave them up. And in verse 28, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. We are seeing the world being turned upside down. And that which was natural, even the man with the woman, is now being looked upon as unacceptable. And that we as a nation no longer hold to the moral law of a thrice holy God. And so we say, why this judgment? Why this wrath? It is because we have rejected the Lord. We have chosen to dismiss the very concept of God in our social discussion and conversation. We are now seeking to reimagine life without the morals and standards of God. It was not always that way. In 1620, the pilgrims, upon arriving in America, formed a compact called the Mayflower Compact that begins with these words, in the name of God, amen having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia. That is how this nation began. James Madison reveals his viewpoint. He is quoted as saying, we have staked the whole future of American civilization, not upon the power of government, but upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. In 1778, George Washington wrote a letter to a fellow patriot in which he noted how he had seen God's hand at work. He said, quote, the hand of providence has been so conspicuous in all this that he must be worse than an infantile that lacks faith and more than wicked that has not gratitude enough to acknowledge his obligations. Patrick Henry is quoted as saying, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. In 1776, Samuel Adams stated at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, we have this day restored the sovereign to whom all men ought to be obedient. He reigns in heaven, and from the rising to the setting of the sun, let his kingdom come. Things are so different today, so profoundly different. And so what is the word of the Lord to his people at such a time as this? 
Isaiah chapter 26, following our prophecy of the empty earth, brings us to some glorious reflections upon what is just before us. Verse 19 of Isaiah 26. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in dust for the dew is as the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead. Verse 20. Come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. And so on the very heels of the empty earth prophecy, God brings our attention to his provision for those who will put their simple childlike faith in him. He says, come my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut the door behind thee and hide thyself as it were for a moment until this indignation be overpassed. I firmly believe with all my being that that word is a prophetic word that points directly to the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. I want to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as we consider the word of the Lord in the face of these most perilous times, this is what God says in verse 51 in 1 Corinthians 15, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. God tells us that there will be a generation of people who love him who are living at this moment when God says, come my people and enter into thy chambers like Noah who entered into the ark and was there for seven days, the period that implies the tribulation. God lifting him up from the world and the wrath or from the days of Lot when the angel of the Lord came and took Lot out and his family before the judgment of God fell upon a Christ-rejecting, God-hating world. God, we read there in Romans, in three different verses, gave them up, turned them over to reprobate minds. What we are seeing today is the wrath of abandonment. It is God lifting up all the restraints that have been around society when at the beginning of this nation, when the benevolence of Almighty God was there to care for us and to establish a great constitution that we might have a more perfect union. Today, those walls are being torn down. And God is saying, look beyond these things. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13, what is the word of the Lord to those who are living in this last generation, who are witnessing the beginnings of an outpouring of the fiery fury indignation of a God who is dealing with his creation that has rejected him and has literally given him the finger. This is what he says to his people. 
Chapter 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. God wants you to have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, verse 16, himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so, dearly beloved, the word of comfort to you is this. He is coming for his people. Don't believe the lies of those who suggest better days are ahead. That the church is going to take over all the institutions of the world and that the wealth of the world is going to be transferred to the church and the members of the church are going to hold prominent positions in government and they are going to become the head instead of the tail and then we will turn over the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of our Lord. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It creates a hope deferred, and more importantly than that, it causes one to get their eyes off of Jesus. I want to be with Jesus. I want to experience the manifest glory of his presence. I want to look upon him no longer with the eyes of faith, but with these eyes of consciousness and beholding his beauty. Jesus said in John 14, beginning in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me, he said. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you might be also. The word of the Lord to his people is, he has gone to prepare a place for us, and he said he's coming back to receive us, and he is going to call us up to meet him in the clouds of the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That is the word of the Lord for the church today. Isaiah chapter 26, once again, though we opened with this very chapter of chapter 24, should I say, and where we saw this, the upside down prophecy, the empty earth of, the, of these days. But this is what God says in the 26th chapter, in the midst of all this chaos, he said, Verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Trust ye, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. God is dealing with those who reject his love and his mercy and woe unto them. But to those of you who believe, he said, keep your eyes on him. There's a, an account in the book of Matthew and where the apostle Peter sees the Lord Jesus walking upon the sea, the waters. And in seeing Jesus, he says this in chapter 14 of Matthew, and Peter, verse 28, and Peter answering him said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, 
He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We need to be careful that we don't look so intently into the abyss of what we see happening before our eyes, the unraveling of a great nation, which is really the only point of restraint that is going to keep the Antichrist from ultimately appearing. But first, the Bible tells us, he that restraineth must be taken away. Don't be so focused on the abyss of evil, of man calling good evil and evil good and and lies as truth and truth is lies. Don't do what Peter did and just look down and saw the storm raging and lost his faith, his sense of peace. And God said, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. So I close with these words. Yes, indeed. We are seeing the beginnings, the shadows of the wrath of God that is being poured upon the world. The Bible tells us that God is judging the world. But we have not been appointed unto wrath but unto salvation. Perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Someone said, what kind of a God is it that is so full of anger, so full of fury, so almost gleaned with wrath to pour out? No, God takes no pleasure in judgment. Beloved, the Lord's arms and hands are stretched out in love. His heart's yearning is to look beyond our faults. He sees our need and hence He sent his son. He paid the price that we could not pay. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. No one twisted his arm. He was not coerced. He loved us so that he gave his only begotten son that Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I am going to close this message with a word that is spoken through music. This is the word of the Lord to those of you who are staggering about in darkness, having no light, And God brought you to this channel to listen to this message because he wants you to have hope, a hope in him, a hope that will never leave you to be disappointed. Listen to the song and the words. Amazing grace shall always song of praise for it was grace that taught my heart to fear I do not know just how he came to love me so 
looked beyond my faults and saw your need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus bled for me. I That caught my falling soul He looked beyond my faults And saw my If you want to know this Jesus Pray this prayer with me Lord, forgive me of my sins, for I am a sinner, and I have sinned against you. Wash away my sins with your blood, for I believe, Lord Jesus, you came into this world for the purpose of taking my place taking upon yourself my sins and giving to me your perfect righteousness as a trade. I believe, Lord, that when you are on that cross, you became all my sin. And there you nailed my sin to the cross of your suffering. And now I am forgiven because you paid the price that I could not pay. I receive you, Lord, this day in my heart by faith. And I believe according to your word that because I have confessed with my mouth that you are Lord and I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead for my salvation I am saved I no longer look to this world for my happiness. My happiness is to be with you, my friend. These are hard days, but I'll tell you what, they are exciting days. Maranatha, in Jesus' name.